Hello guys, I am Lilia Nikolaevna Paparoznik, an English teacher at Odessa Gymnasium 7. I'm happy to meet with you again and be your teacher today. For today's lesson, please prepare your English textbook Year 10 by Oksana Karpuk, 2018 edition. We stopped on page 123, unit 5. During this lesson, we will continue working on the topic of computer technologies. Specifically, we will talk about the World Wide Web. In this lesson, you will practice reading and listening on the topic related to the World Wide Web. You will learn many phrasal verbs related to this topic. You will also learn how to write an informal email. I am convinced that you all spend a lot of time on the internet, but I would like to check if it is true. Please answer these questions. Which websites do you usually visit? Do you chat online? Have you got your own website? Does your school have its own website? Do you buy anything on the internet? How does the internet affect our lives? What do you know about hackers and computer viruses? Make sure to provide a full answer instead of a simple yes or no. Pause this slide so that you can think about each question and how to answer it. Check your answers on the next slide. Here you can check your answers to the questions from the previous slide. Everyone knows that computers have different brands. They can be Samsung, Acer, Lenovo, or Apple, or HP. And computer operating systems are different too. Today, the most famous operating systems are Microsoft Windows and Unix systems. I'm sure that you are familiar with different kinds of web browsers. A web browser, commonly referred to as a browser, is a software application for accessing information on the World Wide Web. When a user requests a web page from a particular website, the web browser retrieves the necessary content from a web server and then displays the page on the user's device. Web browsers are used on a range of devices, including desktops, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. The most used web browsers are Google Chrome, Firefox, and Microsoft Edge. Some of the computers have a CD-ROM drive, but not all of them. Now answer these questions. You can check if you answered these questions correctly by going to the next slide. Here's how you could answer the questions from the previous slide. What brand is your computer? My computer brand is HP. What is the operating system of your computer? The operating system of my computer is Windows 10. Which web browser does your computer use? It uses Google Chrome web browser. Does your computer have a CD-ROM drive? Yes, it does. How often do you write emails? I don't often write emails. Are you a member of any chat group? Of course I am. I am a member of different chat groups on the internet. There are many specific words associated with a computer. Pause this slide and look at the list of words and translate them into your native language using the tech terms computer dictionary. Listen to the text about the internet. Then pause the slide and fill in the gaps. Focus on listening. Page 122. Task 3. Listen to the conversation. Hi, Christina. How are you? Hello, Mike. I'm fine. And you? Yes, things are okay. But look, I'm calling to ask you for a favor. Well, to ask you for a bit of advice, really. 
Okay, what did you want to know? Well, Christy, you know all about the information superhighway. I hear a lot about it these days, but I'm completely lost. I think I should get connected, but I don't know how to set about it. Can you explain clearly and slowly what exactly the Internet is? Yes, of course. Basically, it's a network of communication and information. It operates globally. You can access information easily and immediately on different systems. You can send messages instantly on email. That's electronic mail. You can send and read messages with it. You can access other computers. The list is very long, and new things are happening all the time. Who uses the Internet mostly? Anyone wanting information. Anyone who needs to communicate. Professionals and individuals who want to do any kind of research. So what do I need to do to get connected? Well, first you need some equipment. You need four things. A computer, a Mac or a PC, or any computer with a hard disk. And then you need a modem. The speed of the modem is important. You want one that works fast. And you want one that can compress files. And get a fax modem if you want to send faxes by computer. Right, a modem. You said four things. What else do I need? Software and a service provider. You usually get the software from the service provider. There is often a difference in the price of service providers, so check them carefully before you get connected. Find a service provider near you. If the service provider is not near, your phone bill for long-distance calling will be very high. What do I need to know about software? The basic Internet software kit should consist of a dialer. A dialer? What's that? It is a program to get you logged in or connected with your provider. I see. And then I suppose I need email? Yes. Email is absolutely essential. And you probably also need Gopher. What is that? It is a program which searches out information on the net. You can get Gopher or one of the other programs for searching. Then there's FTP. You can download software from other computers with FTP. You're getting a bit complicated for me. Ha! Uh, <laughs> you'll soon get the idea. So all I have to do now is to find a service provider. Here is how you would fill in the blanks. Internet is a network of communication and information. It operates globally. You can access information easily and immediately on different systems. You can send messages instantly on email. You can send and read messages with it. You can access other computers. The basic Internet software kit should consist of a dialer. A dialer is a program to get you logged in or connected with your provider. For email, you need a program which searches information on the net. What is the Internet? It's a network of computers. Another name, cyberspace a virtual space created by computer systems. It's an information resource. It's a collection of services. It's a communication system. It's a broadcasting medium. Radio and TV provide internet versions of their programs. And it's a community of users. Pause this slide and read about the World Wide Web. In this exercise, match phrasal verbs, switch on, turn on something, switch off, turn off something, plug in something, turn up something, charge something up, with their definitions. You can find the keys to this exercise at the bottom of the slide. Pause this slide and complete the sentences with appropriate phrasal verbs. You can find the keys to this exercise at the bottom of this slide. Here are some tips 
for writing informal emails. Make it clear why you are writing. Use informal, friendly, and short forms of verbs. Include phrasal verbs and idioms. Answer all questions in your friend's email letter. Refer to all the points in your friend's email. Add a piece of information or make a suggestion or request of your own. Ask your friend to reply to you. Here is how to achieve an informal tone in an email. Use contracted forms instead of long forms. For example, use I'd like to instead of I would like to. Use punctuation such as exclamation marks to show surprise or excitement. For example, no way, I couldn't believe it. He was hilarious. Use a chatty style. For example, I bet New York is great. You have to tell me all about it. Use a friendly tone at the beginning and at the end. For example, hi, how are you? Lots of love. Take care. In this exercise, determine whether a sentence is formal or informal. Make sure to pause the slide to work on this exercise. You can find the keys to this exercise at the bottom of this slide. Here is a plan of an informal letter or email. You should start out with greetings. For example, hi John, hello Bob. The first paragraph should acknowledge receipt of the letter or email and give you news. For example, I was happy to get your letter. Thanks for your letter. Sorry, I haven't written for so long. I've been very busy with. Paragraphs two through four should reply to your friend's questions, give necessary information, provide details, make suggestions, recommendations, or arrangements. When you're signing off, ask your friend to write back and then sign off. For example, that's all for now. I need to help my dad with cleaning our car. Write back soon. Bye for now. Love. Keep in touch. Here is a model email. Hi, Clara. I haven't seen you in ages. I saw your sister at Jack's birthday party last weekend. Why didn't you come too? It's a pity because I had been really looking forward to seeing you and having a good chat. The party was absolutely fab, but unfortunately, I spilled some juice on Kate's new white dress and she was furious with me. She still won't speak to me. Can you believe it? It's really upsetting as we've been best friends since primary school and we've never fallen out before. How can I get her to forgive me? By the way, I took masses of photos at the party. Do you want me to send you some? Reply soon, Joy. Pause this slide and complete the email. The keys to this exercise can be found at the bottom of this slide. Here's some homework for you. Write your reply to Joy's email in an appropriate style. Use email checklist. Have you followed the plan of writing informal emails? Have you used correct useful expressions? Have you checked for mistakes in grammar, spelling, and punctuation? Is your email well organized and interesting for the reader? Dear students, I hope this lesson has been really useful for you. Thank you for your hard work during this lesson. Until next time.